So in this particular review, we're gonna go over the features, the design, the pricing, and we're also gonna go in depth and test the gaming on this laptop to see how well it performs. Let's take a look at the specs. With new Iris 540 graphics chip in there, uh, the base i5 with uh, two gigahertz, eight gigabyte RAM, and overall, this is the base model. Get out of the box here. Got some nice Apple shrink wrap. You're gonna have to use USB-C when charging. It's kind of a hassle because it's different and it's not mag safe, but if your charger breaks, which it's gonna be the core that's gonna break first, you're gonna be able to replace that much easier than having to replace the whole charger for 85 bucks. Got some warranty information, how to use your device, and some awesome Apple stickers. Let's go ahead and add this to my collection. As you can see, I have quite a few stickers here. How to use your new MacBook. Shows you how many ports you get. Nope. Not a lot. We're gonna go over why that's important and uh, what these new changes are gonna mean for you. Here's the power brick. This year's power brick's a little bit bigger. Overall though, since they changed it to USB-C, it's kind of a hassle, but it is better overall for you guys. You can also extend the length by pulling out this little piece here. Check this out, this thing is nice. We have some air vents on the back and I did some testing and I can give you some very useful information about the uh, thermals of this uh, device. So on the right, we got the old MacBook Pro and on the left, we got the new one. So with this new MacBook Pro, we have two heating areas. On the old one, we only have one heating area. The heating area on the old one is much hotter, as you can see. But you have to deal with two heat points on the new MacBook Pro. However, it's cooler. Don't think about upgrading this MacBook Pro because nothing is gonna be upgradable except potentially the SSD. Here we have the rubberized feet. A really nice addition actually, because it's really plain and simple. It's a circle and it works really well. It's not something that's just gonna fall off. Also got four screws at the bottom, two screws at the top. Overall, this machine is really, really light and portable. It weighs in about three pounds and it feels a lot smaller than the previous MacBook Pro. I'm actually pretty surprised that they were able to reduce the footprint of this device because it was already so portable and powerful. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. I will be replying to everybody's comments. Wow, it really does look pretty sleek. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with Apple's work here. Now those ports though, that's, that's another story, but we'll get to that in a second. Got the familiar little notch there to open up the laptop. Again, you're gonna be so surprised how light this thing is once you actually try it out in store. Very impressive. Love this new design. We got the all metal hinge on the back. No plastic, just all nice metal. Wow, look at that. Still opens up very easily with one hand. And oh my God, look at this massive trackpad. Jesus, this thing is huge. It was already pretty big and now it's just that much bigger. Wow, it's crazy. So that's about how big the old trackpad was and they just enlarged it. I think this was a really smart move because the more you use your laptop, the more you wanna have less peripherals with you. So you start using that trackpad more often. It actually becomes a very useful tool, especially because Apple's trackpad is very well optimized and works really well with gestures, which I'll show you guys later on in the video. And two USB-Cs, really not a lot of ports to go with. Headphone jack, but at least they gave you good ports that you can utilize. The USB-C is very impressive because it can do data transfer, video. One of the first things I noticed was how they reduced the taper effect. In the past, they used to rely on this taper effect quite a bit when trying to make the device more thin. Now, the taper is much less. The device is actually thin, which is cool because you know you have a nice portable, sleek machine that doesn't weigh a lot. Everything just comes together and looks really well put together. The screen is very, very thin and the bezels are very, very small. These speakers on the side here, very powerful, very nice. 
It also looks plain, actually almost kind of ugly in its own way, but I really like it. So we can't deny it, we have to talk about it. This new keyboard. Most people aren't gonna like it at first glance. It looks very flat and it has a different feel to it. There's not a lot of key travel, but I can tell you this new keyboard is off the hook. It's taller, it's wider. You make a lot less mistakes. After the first two days of using this thing, I was typing quicker. I actually made less mistakes on this keyboard. I think it's a great addition. We even have F keys at the top here and you don't have to push the function button to utilize the volume rockers, pause and play button, and to turn the brightness up and down. You get a very nice satisfying click while typing. It's kind of like a mechanical keyboard where it makes a click, but imagine if the click is only about one fifth of a regular mechanical keyboard. It's crazy what they've done with this keyboard. They've actually reduced the light bleed on it, so you can just see the letter and that's it. I've never really liked it when there was too much light bleed. This is the best keyboard on a laptop right now. And I'm not just saying that because I've reviewed Microsoft products, I've reviewed Dell products, and none of them really stack up to this product here. Ah, oh, the speakers. First, when I heard them on the 12 inch MacBook, they were really, really good. Now you have two of them, one on each side. No longer inside the keyboard, they brought it to the sides. They sound really, really clear. They get very loud and they don't pop or crack when you turn up the volume all the way. All right, let's talk about the screen. The glare is fairly minimal. You did see some glare earlier, but that's because of the environment I've created in my room. It does promote glare like crazy because of how many lights I have. So Apple says that this screen is 25% more RGB color than a 100% full RGB screen. That's really impressive because that means you're getting top notch colors. The whites will look like they're whites. The black will look like they're blacks and everything else will just look and feel the way it should. You really feel like you're getting a lot of quality here. Good trackpad, good speakers, you know, good keyboard, good screen. What more do you want in a premium based laptop? Here we have the two finger scrolling. I think this is great. Put up a notifications tray on your right there by scrolling from the right to the left with two fingers. Look at your notifications. You can even line up all of your apps that you're currently open with three finger scroll up. This gesture support's really unique. Not a lot of laptops have this. I've seen Asus implement something similar to this and Microsoft with Windows 10 recently added something similar, but it still just feels a lot more clunky for me. Apple's found a way to make this experience just a little bit more fluid. And that to me is really important. Open up your notifications tray and you can add a calculator, various clocks. You can add any types of apps you want in your notifications tray. It's actually a really neat concept. Apple also supports a chat program that interfaces with your phone so you can now message and call from your laptop. That's actually really, really neat. Here I have an image opened up in a public chat that I joined with uh, my friends and family. And here's a picture that my brother drew. I was zooming in and out with the two finger scroll. It's really fluid. You even have support for emojis. It's actually pretty cool. Check this out, I can actually send a voice message inside the chat application. It's actually pretty impressive because Apple's actually had this out for almost three years. It's crazy that other manufacturers don't have this. And the F keys on other laptops, you have to press function. I absolutely hate pressing function and then an F key. I just wanna push the keys I need without pushing function buttons. Is that too much to ask for? Thank you, Apple. Okay, so I got some bad news about Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike actually ran kind of okay. There's some really weird screen flickering going on. I tried restarting the game a couple times, was not able to get it to work uh, without the screen flickering. I was, however, able to play the game on highest graphical settings, no vertical sync, 1280 by 800, and I get very good frame rates around 60 to 50-ish, sometimes 70. 
Minecraft ran really, really, really well. Iris 540 just kills Minecraft. I even enabled uh, extra chunks. I maxed out the chunks so we can have very, very far draw distance. And the game works great. And this game's fun. I really miss playing Minecraft. What a great game. You can run the game on max graphics, uh, 1280 by 800, or even 1920 by 1080, and still get very, very high frame rates. I'm in the uh, 60s, 70s, even 80s, even during a 5v5 ranked game. As you will see here, I did pretty good. I didn't run into any issues. I never froze up a single time. This proves that Iris 540 can play uh, games that are of medium intensity, medium to low intensity, pretty good. I've done a lot of testing on a lot of other machines like the Surface Pro 4 as well, if you guys want to take a look. Please let me know if you'd like me to do a part two where I can test other games you guys want me to test. Just leave a comment down below if you are interested. Oh my God, Give this video no. a like. Dota 2 ran really well on the highest graphical settings. As you can see here, I've set my resolution to 1280 by 800 and I've chose uh, pretty much ultra high, high everything and uh, the game runs very, very well. No issues at all. The game seems to run decent. However, I am worried that World of Warcraft will not be able to do good like during raids or during areas that have tons and tons of NPCs you know, or maybe even other players because there's just so much going on in World of Warcraft. I'm kind of worried about it. Now, if you tone all the graphics down to low, I think you should be fine when you're doing PvP or player versus NPC. I think you should be okay only on low. But uh, in just this testing area here, I was able to run medium high and my frame rates were pretty okay. They weren't that high, uh, but I would, I would probably, I wouldn't get this laptop if you're actually going to play a lot of World of Warcraft. And you're going to rely on on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you have a desktop rig at home, definitely just use that instead. Obviously. Duh. I'm not sure what was going on with Diablo 2. The game ran pretty good um, after I had changed the graphical settings. Initially, the default settings make the game lag quite a bit. I don't know what was going on with that. The resolution was fairly fairly low, but everything else was maxed. After I had made the game full screen and put it 12 by 800 with high graphics, pretty much maxed out everything, the game ran good. So I don't know why the preset settings were causing some kind of weird lag. So unfortunately, you will have to play Rust at a low graphical setting, 12 by 800 or 1024 by 768 wow. and the game is playable but you will have to turn down the graphics however the nice thing about rust is that the graphics actually do look good even though on low and it actually runs fairly decent i'd say maybe about 35 something fps uh, but at least it's better than arc take a look you know arc survival is one of those games it's just not optimized to be played on uh, laptops very well. There are some laptops that can run this game, which I have reviewed right up here. Take a look. Um, like the Alienware, for instance. So with Smite, it's a similar story like League of Legends. I ran the game at max graphics and still had no issues whatsoever. Smite's a pretty cool game, I haven't played it much, but it's a lot like League of Legends and uh, I did end up feeding a lot. <laughs> uh. So just go ahead, leave a comment and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.